it may not be the DIY, more economical environmental chamber that I asked for, but with adjustable temperature and humidity, it'll allow us to simulate the environmental conditions just about anywhere on this beautiful blue orb. And that's a good thing, because if my tablet breaks, then damn it, I want it to be for a good reason. Not because I had the audacity to live somewhere hot and tropical. Like, here's a good reason. It's so I could get this segue to our sponsor out of it. FreshBooks. FreshBooks simplifies accounting and bookkeeping, ensuring that you are ready for tax time. Right now, there's a special offer just for our viewers. Go to freshbooks.com slash tech tips and you can save 90% on your first four months. Environmental chambers are one of the most... Environmental chambers like this one are one of the most important pieces of equipment in a manufacturer's arsenal. And the reason for that is even if they're not building a rugged device designed for Arctic expeditions, even devices that are destined to spend their lives indoors can be subjected to vastly different environmental conditions. I mean, take something as simple as room temperature. That is culturally dependent. And room temperature can be as high as 28 degrees Celsius in Nigeria and minus 28 degrees Celsius in Europe in the winter in an energy crisis. That is where the SCH 512-4 comes in. With our humidity range extension option. This bad boy will fit so much humidity, 98% to be exact. So it'll go all the way from five to 98% relative humidity, meaning that we can simulate environments as demanding as Southeast Asia, where as we alluded to before, electronics failure rates can be as high as two to three times what you might find in a more moderate operating environment. Of course, humidity is not the entire story. And we wanna talk about temperature as well. This is a big one because while humidity is going to affect a device's ability to work at all or not work at all, temperature could affect its efficiency. Say a GPU, for example. I need a GPU. Whether it's something as small as finding that a particular GPU runs 3% slower in Texas than it does in Oregon, or something as big as finding that a mobile phone manufacturer has a big battery controversy on their hands because at low temperatures, their battery life falls far lower than the competition. This is gonna help us root it out. And while we might not be looking at the most interesting side of it, there are certainly some things we can talk about back here. For starters, there's power. This bad boy calls for up to 40 amps of 208 volt single phase power and peaks at 8,000 watts. That allows it to go up or down five degrees in temperature per minute. That's all handled by the HVAC system here, which based on the size of the condenser could probably handle a small apartment if it didn't need to go up and down five degrees a minute. Uh, moving down, we've got another optional accessory. Or wait, this can't be optional. Is it like a bigger one or something? That's for the humidity control. I guess if you just want to do temperature control, you wouldn't need this, right? Correct. Cool. They make it very clear that you may not use deionized water. You must use demineralized water. And I guess that's just to keep it from getting schmooed up inside. Or is that to do with the actual no, water it, vapor? It, it'll be due to not getting schmooed up inside. Uh, thankfully, our water up here is nice and clean. So hose it is. Not really? really. No. This is where the liquid goes. Uh, it looks like there's a small filter on it. And then you hook it up to the water inlet right here, which I think we've got to open this up and have a look, right? Like, did we sign some kind of NDA for this thing? Don't believe so. Okay, cool. Yeah. You know what's funny is you make your way from Etsy to consumer electronics to scientific equipment. As your price goes up, the DIY-ness curve kind of looks like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anywho. It's uh, the opposite of the Dunning-Kruger curve. Uh, here's our water inlet. Here's a something. Yeah, it's insulated. So. <laughs> Thanks. So. What well, this, there's some wires. Yeah, what this likely is, is this is going to be the heater slash cooler for the actual water for the humidity control. Mm, in order to make sense. sure that we hit an optimal temperature gradient. Right, cool. And then this looks like it's sleeved, like it might be a temp probe or something. Yeah, those look like thermocouples. Cool. This looks very hand built. I think they all are actually hand assembled. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, oh yeah. Ooh, GN2 purge. Yes, we have a gaseous nitrogen purge, which does gets everything that isn't nitrogen 
out of it. No, I think it uses gaseous nitrogen to purge. Right. So yeah. that would get everything that isn't nitrogen oh, yes. out of it. Okay, yeah. Not strictly speaking behind a door, but this is our desiccant system. Now, what? We just have to like keep refilling it with like desiccant crystals or, I mean, we have an ample supply of them. Yo, logistics, can you guys just save every desiccant package that you get from now on? Actually, no. This is a closed system. We shouldn't have to refill the desiccant uh, frequently by any means. So how does it desiccate? How does it desiccate? Well, let me pull out this handy manual. This so it uses this to control the humidity. This is our air dryer, yeah, yeah, humidity. It delivers wet air, it doesn't excess purge. Uh, so that'll be part of the GN2. So am I gonna have to like buy nitrogen cylinders and crap? Uh, that's a good question. Ooh, speaking of nitrogen cylinders, one of the features of this chamber, though I don't actually see any way to do it, is that you can hook up dry ice or liquid nitrogen to vastly reduce your pull down time. Do you have any idea how that works? Our model didn't come outfitted with that. However, it is an optional add-on that we could talk with AES and get sent out. Oh. So yeah. Okay. We, we don't need it though. Five degrees per minute is pretty good. And if you were complaining about a nitrogen tank, do you really want to store dry ice? Now, from what I heard, AES included an Easter egg for you. Really? They did. Oh, I found it. <laughs> Honestly, I assumed it was whatever was inside here, but that's amazing. Um, I, shout out AES, by the way. I, we did pay for it, right? Yes, we have. But th I'm pretty sure we got a deal on it because like so many scientific equipment manufacturers, these guys are like, wow, it's so cool. Someone other than a manufacturer is finally doing this and have uh, decided to help us out, which is really cool, not just for us, but also for all the consumers who are gonna be more educated thanks to this gear. That is a lot of glass. And this is really cool. We actually got what is supposedly like filming grade glass or something. So if you go on the other side, David, it should be no problem for us to film things that are inside the environmental chamber, which to my understanding is not a standard feature. Would they typically have no glass at all? Or they Correct. would have, oh, it would just have it no would just, glass. Yeah, it would just be a solid plate. Wow, this seems like really fancy. Is this triple paint? It's quadruple paint. Wow. Now this is cool. They've actually got, oh, I guess this is just a grounding strip or something? They've got these strips on the outsides of the glass that seem to be soldered to something. Actually, I think those probes? might be the lights. Oh, shut up, there's yeah. lights? So that way we can film through. Once those lights are on, oh. it should be a clear picture through the glass. That's so cool. Small correction, apparently these might be heating strips because the glass is heated to prevent condensation from forming on it. Correct. That's freaking cool. Yeah, these guys went all out with making sure we could actually film through here. Oh, amazing. Now, the kinds of things that we might end up filming then. I think certain things are obvious, like phones. I mean, you could do a whole army of phones. Like, yeah. is that the kind of thing that we would do? Oh yeah, I'm good. I plan on having 25 devices under test at any given time for the most part. So we're gonna be able to have 25 devices in here all at the same temperature and we'll be able to record their battery drain at different levels. Now tell me something, do you need to have them plugged in in order for you to record all that diagnostic data or? Nope. Everything wireless. Everything. Over the network. That's, look in the back. We have passed through. Wait, that stays open yeah. and it still stays at the right humidity yeah. and temp? Shut up. Yep. But there's holes. Yep. I mean, you would at least plug them if you're not. Yes. And of course, the beefiest environmental chip. They're foam. So I you can keep your cables. them. <gasps> That's so cool. This is the most satisfying squishy toy. I want to ask them what this is made of so we can do like a stress ball for LTT store. Feel it. Uh, it looks like a neoprene composite. This goes in here, probably on the outside for user friendliness. <laughs> These will be especially useful for categories of devices that cannot be operated wirelessly. Like say, for example, a PC power supply. The home for the environmental chamber is actually going to be right next to our power supply testing unit. So. I think the idea is that while we can't necessarily run efficiency tests, while it's, wait, yeah, how are we gonna do that? Cause we'd want the cables to be the stock cables plugged into the PSU tester. Like, is that gonna reach? We're right next to it. So yeah, realistically we could. Um, but? But I believe that we are gonna have some longer cables from the Chroma that'll plug in. Okay, but then we wouldn't be able to evaluate efficiency at high temperatures. 
we are going to be able to... Mm, that's a good point. Gaines is the mobile guy in the long term, so realistically that's not going to be his problem, but it is one that we are going to have to solve because the efficiency of a power supply can be dramatically different at zero degrees compared to what it is at 40 degrees, both of which are perfectly realistic operating environments. This makes sense then. You'd have your pass-throughs for the top shelf and your pass-throughs for the bottom shelf, and while you can put the shelf absolutely at any height that you want, Probably, I suspect, what we do is end up with it kind of in the middle most of the time. Yeah, I would say so. You could probably, if we put a base plate down, fit six laptops in here if you put them, oh. if you pivoted them 90 degrees. Yeah, that could work. So that way they're side facing. Would you get enough air circulation if you had a solid shelf, though? You wouldn't have to fully cover the shelf. So you just make sure underneath the laptops, it was flat. <sighs> That's still getting dangerously not that real world because- You get a two inch buffer all the way around it, you're fine. It are you? Well, let's find out. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess we could test that. And That's then we why we're could... here, yeah. Right, okay, fair enough. I was told this could be used to test desktop computers. Not this desktop. Hold on, see, look. Perfectly normal gaming desktop. Doesn't even fit in my environmental chamber, Gary. I know, we, we just cut a little here. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, is that how you did things back at ASUS? Absolutely. <laughs> in all seriousness though, guys, uh, this is a much more typical mid-tower sized computer, which... It's a Dell. Is this a Threadripper Pro? Yes. Is this new Threadripper Pro? Yes. What new? What new? $59.95. Oh, okay. I thought it was like very new. No. But tell me something. This thing could easily be kicking 1,000, 1,500 watts of heat out into the chamber. If we tell this thing cool it down, we're probably not going to get five degrees a minute out of it. No, so your pull down or your rise up rates are going to vary depending on what's actually in there. Sure. You've got a thermal load. Right. Yeah. Sure. So empty, five degrees per minute. Got it. With this in here, maybe we might a break even. few degrees a minute. Yeah. <laughs> ah, I know what this is. AS1 Connect. We got an extra system that allows us to connect this thing to the network and it'll log over a span of like years or something like that. Like every humidity, every temperature, how often does it log? Do we know? I don't know the exact polling rate, but it is, I believe it's just logging all the time. That is freaking incredible. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. What the hell am yeah, I looking you at You weren't here? expecting that when you opened it up, were you? I was expecting something, but that's beautiful. You can tell they take seriously, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, proper cable management. So circulation motors, compressor, we've got heat, power supply, humidity heat. Here's our window heat, if we wanted to trace those wires. Yep. Now we can't turn it on today, unfortunately, uh, because we don't have the power plug installed yet. But what I can do is further demonstrate the size by showing that we can fit a whole human inside the environmental chamber. How long would I last in here at the extremes of what this chamber can do? Not very, but we could make it very comfortable. You know, man, I could be so comfortable in here if it was working right now. We could keep it at a healthy 25 degrees. Just like I'd be comfortable telling you about our sponsor. Bitdefender. They're committed to protecting and improving the online experience of their users all around the world. Bitdefender does this by detecting and stopping ransomware, adware, malware, and web attacks. And if you're worried about this affecting the performance of other tasks, they do this with minimal to no slowdown on your devices. Bitdefender builds their solutions with the user at the forefront. They care about you. This means multi-layered protection, instant reactions to online threats, and security for your personal info and digital identity. With tools like a password manager, credit monitoring, and a Wi-Fi security advisor, you know Bitdefender has your back. If you want to learn why AV Comparatives called Bitdefender Security their product of the year in 2022, as well as save 63% off a year subscription, you can click the link below and get started today. Thanks again, Bitdefender. If you'd like to see more of what we're working on in the new building, be sure to check out our latest labs update video. One thing to note, we don't actually have a safety latch in here, so you probably shouldn't climb in there. Oh, that seems like the kind of thing, well, I mean, <laughs> they probably assume anyone smart enough to operate this equipment is smart enough not to crawl in an environmental chamber. <laughs> <laughs>